Blackboard Building Blocks for Newbies, Newbie Casts. Developing a building block from the ground up. Part 4, the final part. Finishing up the building block. In this last part of our four-part series, we'll review what we're trying to accomplish with our building block. We'll make our markup handler form to address the inputs required by Quizlet. And then we'll write a small handler helper class, which will help us take the content that we create and inject it into the Blackboard content management system. Then, of course, we'll poke around with Firebug a bit and see what other things that we got to clean up to give this thing the full polish it needs to be a true billing block. All right, let's start. If you recall, what we're trying to do is take a flashcard set from Quizlet, for example, these basic Spanish verbs, and then given a title and a Quizlet ID number as input, use those two values to create a custom embed code that we can then paste into Blackboard Learn under the content area section. So what you're watching me do right now is what we're trying to automate with the building block. How are we going to do this? Well, we're back in Eclipse now, and I've made some changes to the content mashup page. What I've done at this point is I've created a form, and every form needs a data collection section. And then I have a, a step section, and you can see that this is referencing our bundle. So if I go back to our Manifest, you can see step title, add flashcard set, step instructions, enter the title for the flashcard, Quizlet ID. Then I have some hidden variables that I'm going to need. I'm, in order to reference where this is going to go in the CMS, I need to know the course ID, the content ID, and uh, the refer, so I can go back to the page that invoked this entry point. Then I have um, some data elements. One is a text box that we'll use to get the title and the other text box will ask for the Quizlet ID. What's really cool about um, when you have when you're importing the tag libs up here when you're importing the tag libs up here you can use this to your advantage when you create a start out with a less than it opens up the blackboard tags and you can pick one out of this list for example data element and if you go inside the tag and you hit control space it brings up the properties for that tag for example I can put data element label label Mike and then is required true and then inside this data element I can maybe put in a text element, name fudge, uh, is password true. Okay, just to give you an example of what you can do. So I'm going to actually deploy this building block so you can see what these changes I made here and also see the legitimate changes I made upstairs where we're going to enter our data. So let me do that. Again, I'm going to use the visual version of this so you can kind of see it unfold. Whoops, I forgot to save it. Back to Blackboard Learn, go to a content area, Quizlet, and there's my form. And this is my element that I added manually, and if you type it up, you see it's a password box. This doesn't do anything. If I put in a title here, and then I put in a Quizlet ID here, and I hit Submit, nothing happens, uh, because we didn't write any code to make anything happen. Okay, back over here, I'm going to get rid of this, because we don't want it. And through the magic of copy-paste, I'm going to add the code up here to handle the postback after we fill in the form. Okay, I've done a little copy-paste, and now up here, you can see this area where I have an if statement. It says, if your request method is a post, then retrieve the course ID and the content ID. from the Get the two values out of the text box. 
our return URL is going to be our referrer. And then this is me building a string for the Quizlet plugin. And one of the things that Quizlet plugin needs is the ID number right here, ID text. Right. This is probably not the best way to do it, but again, this is just a quick and dirty example. I would probably use some kind of string builder if I was going to do this for real. Uh, then you'll see that the next call that we make is to something called content creator. This is a class library method that will take our HTML and embed it into the Blackboard content, into the page that was part of our entry point. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll send a redirect request to our referrer, which will take us back and we'll pass in a receipt message that says we added our content. So this is going to help close our loop. So if you want to really kind of see this run, this content creator here, we, it's got a, a red line on it. And the reason it has that on there is because we have not implemented this class yet. So what I'm going to do for Grins is I'm going to take this, cut it out for now. And with me cutting it out, I can save this and let's build it. Send it up to the Blackboard server. It's up there. Great. And let's try out the building block one more time. Flashcard set. I'm going to put in a title of Spanish verbs. Man, if I could type, I'd be dangerous. And then over here, I'm going to put in the Quizlet ID. Here's the Quizlet ID for Spanish verbs right here. Copy that. And I'll hit submit. And it posts back, but nothing happens. And that doesn't surprise you because the code went through all of this rigmarole and it made this embedded HTML. But one thing it did not do is add it to the Blackboard CMS. That's what this code does right here. This is the code that does that. And we have to take this content creator, create content, and implement it. So let's do that now. If you notice, we have this import, and it says EDUC or iSchool B2 Quizlet. This is my namespace for this content creator class. So let's do that first. Source, new, package, uh, EDU, Seer, iSchool B2 Quizlet. And let's add a class. Class content creator. Once again, through the magic of copy and paste, I was able to fill in this content creator class. Let's briefly kind of step through what it's doing here. Um, it has one static method, which means that you can call, you can invoke this method without the need to construct an object around this class. What this method does is it gets a reference to the persistence manager. It makes a new piece of content, sets the title and body of that content, uh, sets the handler for that content, gets the course ID and parent ID and sets those to the content and then it uses the persister to persist that content. This is pretty much the shell code for how you, you save something uh, into the CMS. All right, now that we've got this here, if we save this, close it, go back to the content mashup building block, we'll see that our error disappears up here, our error disappears down here because it can now resolve that dependency and it looks like we have everything we need to make this building block go. I'm a little nervous. Let's give it a try. Oh, that worked. Okay. And let's create flashcard set Quizlet. Spanish verbs. Let's grab our Quizlet number. go. Hey, look at that. It worked. Awesome. I love it when a plan comes together. 
there you go. It works. Now, is it done? I would have to say no. And let me explain why. If I turn on Firebug, invoke the building block. Let me go to the network tab. Clear that out. And let me invoke the building block. We get a couple of 404s here. See that right there? 404 not found. Probably going to be another one in here for the, the style sheet. 404 not found. You should probably resolve these 404s. If you're not going to include a style sheet, then take out the code in the building block that does it. If you're not going to have a, an icon, then, then take out that icon as well. Or manipulate your code so that it points to the, the proper icon file and works. But don't leave it like this. Don't deploy it like this. I Whenever I build my building blocks, I always verify that they're, they're not going to have this kind of problem uh, in them and that everything is going to re resolve properly. But other than that, we have a working building block. It's not perfect, but it certainly is functional and hopefully it demonstrates how to do this kind of stuff and gives you some inspiration for how to do it on your own. This concludes our four-part series on building your own building block. I hope you found this information valuable and useful. I'm Michael Fudge. Thank you for listening, and bye.